Damn it, how long have we been doing this show? The Wrestling Life. Hey, everybody, it's The Wrestling Life. It is episode 332. It is WrestleMania weekend. It's the weekend of the 39th annual Colossal Puzzle. I'm Ethan. <laughs> Welcome, Grab fans. I'm Liam. <laughs> and as always, Liam, uh, we have so much to talk about. And so many things we can't talk about right here on the first and still the only wrestling podcast. So uh, a lot of stuff happening this weekend. There's a lot of stuff happening as we speak. Mm-hmm. It is uh, it's WrestleMania weekend. There is a Ring of Honor pay per view on Friday. There's SmackDown on Friday. There's the Hall of Fame on Friday. There's NXT Saturday afternoon. There's WrestleMania Saturday night. There's WrestleMania Sunday night. There is Josh Barnett's Bloodsport going on. There's WrestleCon Super Show going on. Mm-hmm. There's the Impact NJPW, whatever they're doing. Mm-hmm. Multiverse of matches the happening. Cursed Show. Yes. Um, there's just so much going on. Um, I will say, less buzz for this weekend's indie events. Uh, than in years past, it feels like. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, probably the biggest like newsworthy thing is that it's Kotobushi's first match in like almost two years. Yes, <laughs> it's happening. He's wrestling on the Blood Sports show. He's wrestling on the uh, Joey Janela Spring Break show, and maybe there's one other one as well. But yeah, he's uh, that's probably the biggest news coming out of these indie shows. And like, I'm sure there will, as always, I'm sure there'll be a lot of good wrestling and. A lot of terrible wrestling, but uh, it's just going to be constantly on. And uh, hey, if you can, uh, if you have, if you have faith that uh, the fight TV feed will help, will hold up, you can pay like eight dollars to watch like four thousand GCW shows. So there's always that quantity over quality in some cases. <laughs> yeah, there, there's that classic stuff. So- Two. We're going to hit on the major shows here. I guess these are the major shows. <laughs> Ring of Honor. Friday at 7 p.m. Claudio versus Eddie Kingston. El Hio del Vikingo versus Commander. Wheeler Yuta versus Katsuyori Shibata. Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Daniel Garcia. Athena versus Yuka Sakazaki. Samoa Joe versus Mark Briscoe. The Reach for the Sky ladder match with Lucha Bros, Top Flight, The Kingdom, Aussie Open, and Roosh and Jalistico. And then everyone's favorite wrestler, Brian Cage, <laughs> and the Embassy uh, defending their six man tag team titles against AR Fox, Blake Christian, and Metalik. So, pretty stacked card considering you get Tanahashi, you get Claudio and Eddie. You get Vikingo and Commander. You get Katsuyori Shibata. You get Smell Joe and Mark Briscoe there. And you get a, a ladder match that's sure to be insane. Yeah. I, uh, I, it's, it's a weird thing because I would like to see <laughs> a lot of the matches on this show, but I don't currently subscribe to Honor Club. And, uh, so well, I guess this is, it's pay per view. Oh, this is pay per view. Okay. Yeah. So it's separate. So yeah. yeah, I don't know. I uh, I I'm I'm tangentially interested in, in this show, but this might be one where I don't watch live, and then if I hear enough fanfare around it, maybe I go and and try to watch it like Saturday morning or something. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's hard to look at that card. I mean, Shibata and Yuta is that'll be fun. Shibata matches are just fun for the spectacle at this point, and you know, seeing if his brain falls out of his head again. <laughs> It's Dave once reported. Um, and uh, Eddie Eddie and Claudio feels like a match that should be in the real promotion. <laughs> and not this uh, this satellite promotion that Tony Khan runs. But uh, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure it'll all be a very good show. Um, and then you got, you got crazy stuff like the Vi- Vikingo match on the show and the ladder match and 
Um, you know, I'm sure Joe and Mark Briscoe will be very emotional. So yeah, I mean, the show's got a lot going for it, but it's, uh, I mean, yeah, like you said, I think maybe it's just the overall non mania shows all over the place. Just don't quite feel, have, feel like they have the same oomph behind them this year. Oh, there's the thing too. Of, are you going to pay? Presuming that everyone watches wrestling legally mm-hmm. in in uh, in a <laughs> everyone uh, has not visibly committed murder or <laughs> visibly uh, ever pirated a show. It's like, are you going to spend? the 34.99 or whatever to watch um ring of honor or are you going to flip over to fox and <laughs> watch smackdown for free and then if you already get peacock watch the hall of fame for free or if you don't get it you know you, you can watch the hall of fame, hall of fame at both nights of wrestlemania for 8 or 9 dollars <laughs> right at at a certain point I think for the average fan this becomes a math equation and that's fine yeah I mean as we talked about it's how how much how much time do you want to devote to wrestling (laughs) when you already know that there are two four hour shows this weekend that you'll be watching Uh, do you want to spend another three to nine to twelve to fifty hours (laughs) if you watch all these ancillary things uh uh, do you want to spend that much additional time? Do you have no other interests in your life? I guess is my question. <laughs> right. Um, I do, but unfortunately, I don't have a choice. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I, I got to watch that show. Uh, let's see here. We will then move on to Stand and Deliver Saturday afternoon at 1 p.m. My God. 10 a.m. <laughs> Pacific time. The show is going in the ring. That is correct. That's correct. The show is going to be hosted by Pretty Deadlies, Elton Prince <laughs> and Kit Wilson, which frankly, quite frankly, is a reason to watch the show. <laughs> Agreed. The, those guys are absolutely fantastic. Um, There is the in-ring debut of The Rock's Daughter on this show. She teams with the schism against Chase University, and the winner gets control of Chase University. I think uh, you think Dwayne is Dwayne going to be watching through the curtain? It's a good town? question. It's a good question. He is very busy, as you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He has a football league. He's running. Mm-hmm. He has to defend the honor of Black Adam. <laughs> On online, which is Repeatedly. a full time job. <laughs> True. <laughs> he has to do a lot of media to let everyone know that he's not mad. <laughs> that uh, that he was not given control of the DC uh, cinematic universe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I I don't know. I don't know. I I don't know if Dwayne would be there. Seems like the kind of thing you'd want to be there for. Seems like if you're WWE, you've got WrestleMania weekend. You got Dwayne there. It'd be real weird to have him show up on the 10 a.m. show. <laughs> True. So maybe maybe just peeks through the curtain as you as you kind of intimated there. I don't know. Uh, also on that show, uh, the tag team titles are on the line in a three way: Gallus versus the Crees versus Tony D'Angelo and Channing Stacks Lorenzo. That could be fun. I, I don't see anything in the Gallus guys. Creeds are, are good young Steiners in a uh, in a promotion that never understood what to do with the Steiners. <laughs> uh, Tony D and Channing Stacks are fine. There's a five way for the North American title with Wesley Dragon Lee, <laughs> JD McDonut, Ilya Dragunov, and Axiom. It could absolutely be insane. Sounds like it. Sounds like that's a lot of a uh, a lot of athleticism there. Sounds like a match that Vince McMahon would hate. Yeah, for sure. Uh, tag team title, women's tag team titles. 
uh, Fallon Henley, Keanu James versus Elbow Fire and Isla <laughs> Dawn. Um, there uh, it's just a couple of the ladies in NXT that are into witchcraft. <laughs> so there's that that's going on. Uh, ladder match for the women's title. Roxanne versus Zoe Stark versus Gigi Dolan versus Tiffany Stratton versus uh, Lyra Valkyria versus Indy Hartwell. Uh, to me, the question is, is this the coronation of Tiffany Stratton? T- t- watching the television, that's what that would lead you to believe. Mm-hmm. Or does Roxanne keep it? Or is Roxanne already um, ticketed for bigger, better things already and main roster bound already? I don't know. If if I'm not mistaken, she she vacated the belt after they did the 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 one of the ver- the many rehashes of a Shawn Michaels angle on NXT in the last two months. Um, I don't know if it was ever officially vacated. Okay, they, they intimated that Shawn might have to make the the ladder match for the vacant women's title. And then Roxanne returned on TV this week with the title, and Sean put her in the ladder match after she begged. I see. I did see uh, that segment. Some, yeah, Disney Channel award winning act, uh, acting in that segment from Sean. I mean, Sean is a much better actor than he showed in that segment. <laughs> was he better because in the Marine Six? He was much better in the Marine Six. <laughs> He was much better in the uh, the uh, Christian movie he did that mm-hmm. uh, I went to the theater and saw <laughs> and uh, broke down in tears. Oh, all right. It was my goodness. That movie's fun and it's just kind of rolling along. And then there's a point. And if you ever watch it, you know, I, I don't even remember what the movie's called. <laughs> it's pro- probably a bad thing, but <laughs> there's a. There's a point uh, like right before act three where they just they bring out a big uh, like that uh, hangman hitting stick with uh, a two by four board with nails on it or whatever. (laughs) And they just whack you in the side of the head with it. (laughs) And I was not expecting that. And (laughs) anyway, I'm reviewing a uh, seven year old niche movie now that no one ever saw. (laughs) Oh, that's great. It's going to drive me insane now. I got to know the name of that movie. What's this? Um, Where's uh, where's HBK's filmography here? I remember, um, I remember, if I'm not mistaken, the janitor from Scrubs is in it, playing the correct. main character's dad. I remember that. That's correct. Uh, the movie's called The Resurrection of Gavin Stone. Ah, classic. How is there not someone in NXT named Gavin Stone, honestly? Yeah, I don't know how that hasn't happened yet. Uh I did not remember that this was a WWE story. Rotten Tomatoes, uh, uh, 54% is that critics or audience if it's the popcorn bucket that's audience if it's the tomato it's uh yeah I know how that works I uh <laughs> just I can't ah there it is there's the link for uh this is very important audience score 84% the critics, fifty four percent. That's about right. So they made it for the fans, is what you're saying? Yeah, for the <laughs> fans of Shawn Michaels, for the fans of Jesus. Yes, not for exactly. the critics. No, 90, 92 minutes, uh, rated PG, mm-hmm. genre comedy and drama. Ah. Yeah, it's a comedy, and then after an hour they just hit you in the head with a two by four. <laughs> oh man anyway that movie is incredible NXT Sam Deliver as I mentioned <laughs> Braun Breaker another Steiner in a promotion that has never known what to do with the Steiners defending his title against Carmelo Hayes mm-hmm. they're doing everything to make you think that Carmelo Hayes is going to win the title but of these two it seems like Carmelo Hayes is the one that is probably going to the main roster first. Unless they both are. Uh, so that's kind of weird. 
And then uh, Johnny Gargano versus Grayson Waller in an unsanctioned match. Uh, they got the main event spot for their go home angle on the go home show. I assume this is going on last. Um, That's Johnny's consolation prize for not getting booked on Mania. I, I suppose. I suppose. He's in the Andre Battle Royal on Friday night also. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, so that's uh that's stand and deliver. Uh Johnny and uh they're really high on Grayson. I don't get it. Um they're really high on Carmelo. I kinda get it, but apparently he's a little fella. Mm-hmm. He's a uh, smaller than Adam Cole, who who Vince wanted to make a manager. Mm-hmm. So uh not looking good for this Sasha. NXT is a fine show every week. Absolutely fine. And uh, the show, I'm sure, will have a lot of wild stuff on it and be fun. Are you planning on viewing this? <laughs> um, <laughs> Do you have anything to say about it whatsoever? <laughs> hard for me as someone who doesn't consume the product. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I think I will probably watch this show because every NXT pay-per-view, I watch the NXT pay-per-views generally when they're on, and they're always watchable and they always uh, i think do a good job of assuming you haven't watched the television show and they give you just enough to explain what's going on so uh, i so i'm the guy that when you're like watching the show and you're like the show could be two hours shorter if they took out all these video packages i'm like no no sir uh, it's it's for me i need the video packages because i don't watch the show every week so uh these nxt shows are always always pretty good and uh yeah, like you said, there's some intrigue as to what could what the finishes on this show could be setting up for, say, the Monday after Mania. So there's there's some interest here. There's a there's a tepid interest in this show, I think. I don't believe that you're watching it, but OK. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have it on. You've not you've you've not convinced me. <laughs> All right. Uh, WrestleMania. It's the main event of the weekend. It's two nights. WrestleMania goes Hollywood in case you have been living under a rock and have missed the tagline at some point over the last year and a half. Mm-hmm. Night one. They uh, released the lineups today for uh, night one. There is some conflicting information uh, given that they announced that uh, Cena versus Theory would be would kick off night one. And then on ESPN today, they said it would headline night one. I think we're caught up in in an argument of semantics here so there's that uh i think it's still opening the show but it would be weird because they (laughs) look it wouldn't be the first time but it would be weird when they hit that very hard that this kicks off wrestlemania i feel like it was just this is on espn so let's just say what the what we think the biggest match on the show is last so they picked john's match even though it's not actually going on last yeah, there's that. Austin Theory versus John Cena. I would put Cena over. I think they're putting Theory over. What do you think? Yeah, I, w- I think Theory will win. I think they, <laughs> which is hilarious because they had him cut his, his go-home promo in an empty building because they didn't want him to get wooded on uh, on Monday. Um, so, uh, but it doesn't matter if he's not ready or if he doesn't have that level of crowd intrigue where he should be beating still your maybe your your biggest star in your your whole company because we've decided that austin theories is gonna be a thing so i expect him to win remember when uh remember when papa h took over and like uh for the first three weeks that he was in charge they just beat austin theory on every show like a drum mm-hmm. <laughs> and then uh and then all of a sudden uh he was just jammed down everyone's throat again <laughs> yeah yeah lost lost money in the bank briefcase on a cash yeah. in on a u on the u.s title yeah then next week we just kind of pretended that didn't happen he and he grew a beard so now he's a tough main eventer sure Seth Rollins versus Logan Paul. Apparently the last match of Logan Paul's current WWE contract. I don't think that means anything. <laughs> I think if he wants to keep wrestling, there's only one place that he's going to do it. And uh, I expect that they'll reach some kind of agreement. That notwithstanding, are you uh, excited for Seth Rollins <laughs> and Logan Paul? 
Um, yeah, they'll do some crazy stuff, right? There's going to be a big stunt. They'll go through a table. Um, the entrances will be very extra. Uh, yeah, it'll be good. This will be a this will be one of I think the big spectacle matches, and that's one of the things I think you want out of WrestleMania beyond whatever work rate the match will or won't have. Like they're gonna do some crazy stuff in it, and there will probably be uh, a lot of fun and and uh, and over the top stuff. I I hate Seth Rollins' character, but uh, still good wrestler, and and Logan Paul is good beyond his years, and they're good at. Uh, working matches around what he is good at. So I expect this to be very good. There's a better buckshot lariat than the guy that invented the buckshot lariat. <laughs> Hard to disagree. He's got a real he's got a real bounce to it when he comes off the uh after the flip. It's very fluid. Chris Lee and Becky versus Bailey, Dakota, and EO. I'm just excited for the angle here. <laughs> The secret plan? Yes. <laughs> Very excited for the secret plan. <laughs> my friend my friend Trish is gonna turn on Becky and we're gonna go there to SummerSlam. So in your in your version of this, is Trish around for the next six months or does she disappear? And uh, Becky he... just cuts promos on her by herself for five months and then it's she only back. like it's only like four months. Okay. And uh it's She's not around all the time. No, I I don't think it's good for anyone to be on WWE TV all the time <laughs> for four consecutive months. And uh, no, so I think it's just it's just here and there, you know. I mean, they have to lose the tag titles first. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Lita and Becky still have to lose the tag titles at some point. A lot of lot of uh, play. Maybe you do the turn on Monday. Does Lita uh, turn with her? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay, so Trish is also turning on Lita then, right? If she's going to cost, yes, I believe Becky so. The tag. Okay, I don't, I don't know how that's going to, you know, work out with the uh, like the photo ops that they do at every convention. <laughs> Their tour, yeah, the team best tour. show tour. That, <laughs> yeah, that vaudeville act they're always pedaling. Yeah, they do some uh, tap dancing, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they do. A, they do a two woman show. A lot of spoken word. A wonderful variety show. <laughs> Jeez. Like the Jay Leno show. <laughs> just, Jay. Did a wonderful. <laughs> did a wonderful variety show. <laughs> it's tremendous. Absolutely tremendous. Um, the WrestleMania showcase match. It's how they branded these get everybody on the show matches this year, which hey, it's interesting. And yeah, it's an interesting idea. <laughs> Braun and Ricky Shea versus the Street Profits versus Alpha Academy versus the Viking Raiders. Okay, fine. And no one could possibly have an opinion on that match. Mm-hmm. Charlotte versus Rhea for the SmackDown women's title. They've done maybe two good angles or promos in the two months that they've been building this match. <laughs> and then on SmackDown last week, Charlotte got wanted mm-hmm. and I don't know if she went into business for herself and was he- healing on the audience herself, or if it was scripted for her to heal on the audience. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. They've done good stuff. It's hard for me to picture a universe in which this match is as good or better than the WrestleMania match they had in an empty building (laughs) three years ago. I do remember them wailing on each other in that match. Yes. I think I blocked most of that COVID WrestleMania out, but I do remember them just beating the tar out of each other. Correct. Uh, Um, Do you have any thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, I, I can kind of only echo what you already said which is that i think it could be a good match in the ring but it's not <sighs> charlotte's been around for a really long time and i know she goes away for like six months every year but she just feels staler than stale to me as a character and i just i just don't think there's a lot that you can do like she's been a heel she's been a face numerous times sometimes both in the same segment um 
I just I just don't know what you can do that's interesting with her. Uh, uh, so I guess I hope Rio wins, and uh, and then you have Rhea be the champion for a while, and she can face off against the stacked SmackDown Women's Division. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just like I I like Charlotte, you know, as a personality. Um, but I just and I think she has a lot. She's had a lot of very good matches and she always works very hard especially on these big shows but just 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 hard to hard to get excited about this one sure ray versus dominic they finally pulled the trigger on the angle here and uh, the people went absolutely nuts for it they went banana yeah it's gonna be uh i don't i don't know does the father son brother brother thing ever work? Like, do you ever do you ever <laughs> believe that these people hate each other? I don't know. It it worked. It worked with Brett and Elvin, right? That's that's the exception that proves the rule. Um, yes. And no one else has ever really made it work. So, um, I mean, look, people really friggin' hate Dominic, <laughs> and they did go crazy for Ray uh, for Ray belting him. So, I think the crowd will be into it for the first match if they feud past this i don't i don't know and there is that problem um that dominic's not very good um at any aspect of wrestling so there's there is that maybe hindering it but i think there'll be a lot of my thought was you should have dominic win ray go away for a little while and then you come back and you do mask versus hair and ray wins that and you shave dominic's stupid mullet but maybe that's too yeah. pro wrestling for uh, for this modern company. Well, it depends who's really running the company. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see Hunter going for that. I can see Vince going for that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. Ray, Ray. The problem. The only. The only downside to me in uh, on Ray Mysterio is that he. Gets injured fifty percent of the time he wrestles now. Mm -hmm. The stem cells have finally worn off. <laughs> that's that's the only downside. I could not believe they were putting him in the ring on uh, SmackDown last week. Or uh, Raw too. Yeah, or maybe it was. Yeah, I couldn't believe that. Like a week before the big match, they risked putting him in the ring just because. <laughs> He's Mr. Glass at this point. but And then the, the Usos versus Kevin and Sammy, the real main event of night one. Yeah, I'm, I think this will be incredible. It's it's everything that you want in a big time WrestleMania match. It's been built up for a while. The fans are ready for it. Fans love Kevin and Sammy together. And, the, you know, the Usos have been champion for 17 years. So people are, I think, ready for a title change and people uh, want the, I think, especially the Sammy character to get a big happy ending. So it's like you've got all the ingredients here for for one of those patented uh, video package uh, worthy WrestleMania moments that you harken back to over the next 10 years and in slow motion with Sammy and Kevin hoisting those belts. So you would pull the trigger and uh, switch the titles, switch all the titles at once here. I would. Yeah, I think they've I mean, they've already hinted that the storyline after Mania is going to be dis, dis, you know, discord in the in the bloodline with Solo and the Usos uh, wanting to leave Roman after he loses the title. So, yeah, I would. I mean, I guess you could you could make an argument that oh, well, there's more of a reason to pull the trigger on that. If the Usos hold up their end and stay champion, but Roman loses his belt or vice versa, I guess. But I would just, I would, I'm a big, I'm a big believer in the WrestleMania happy ending. So I'm very much pulling for, uh, for Kevin and Sammy to win the belts here. Okay. Uh, night two, the real main event, Brock versus Omos. <laughs> The real colossal tussle. What did you think of that that way end segment where Brock uh, almost <laughs> broke his broke his leg 
trying to do spots with Omos. Magnificent. We were like, we're like one one step away from Brock like doing a flying crossbody off the top rope. <laughs> you <laughs> called you called it? It's not the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. He's just like the way he was just it's just you've seen so many matches where Brock just throws the guy around, even when it's a guy bigger than him. So the fact that now they're doing this match where Brock has to create 100% of the movement because I almost yeah. can't do anything. Yes. But a big boot. <laughs> yes. It's incredible. And like, so Brock's like throwing flying forearms and just, just out of his mind running and jumping all over the place. And it's like, Oh my God, I think Brock's coming off the top rope in this match. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, this is, I would say, this is up there with, I think, the most anticipated thing. Unironically, I am super psyched for this because Brock, I think, despite his uh, his laissez-faire re- reputation <laughs> of not caring, uh, that dude does not half-ass <laughs> stuff like this, as, as has been seen on that angle on Monday. So I think he's going to just go insane trying to get something out of this guy and if and there's always that chance that he'll just get mad and start hitting him for real like he did to braun that one time so (laughs) either way i feel like this is going to be great it's also allegedly the last match of his deal and he's kind of lost any negotiating leverage because he can't go fight no more because he's 45 years old Mm -hmm. Um, like sticking hgh (laughs) allegedly allegedly. (laughs) There's that too. Uh, so, um, yeah, there's the uh, maybe he's motivated to try to get this company continue, to continue to pay him millions of dollars every year to not do a whole lot. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, maybe we got to keep that rolling. Another uh, big test versus... of, uh, of who's it, who's really in charge. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Bianca versus Asuka for the Raw Women's title. Bianca's been champ for a year. Mm-hmm. Feels like uh, feels like it's about time we uh, switch the title. Yeah, I think I think so. Um, you can always have her chase and get it back eventually, but um, unless you're calling up a lot of, I don't, I don't. Do they have like heel women ready in NXT? Uh, Tiffany Stratton would be on that list. Sure. Um, that's probably about it. Indies as very tall. As people, they they like her. Uh, I'm not sure they like her anymore. Oh, all right. <laughs> I think Indy could could get fired uh, when they do spring cleaning. I mean, she has been in NXT for like 14 years. <laughs> and if you're She's, not a secret like coach like Zoe, what's her name? Right. Uh, then you and you're still in NXT after all this time, and you've already done your main event matches and didn't get called up. Uh, I think there's reason to be concerned if you're her. Zoe is also another one who I forgot was uh, is pretty much they they could pull the trigger. I mean, they could they could call her up tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Like she's she's done pretty much everything you could do there. So yeah, but that being said, even if you do call up one or two people, Bianca's just run through so many. <laughs> so many heels that it feels like she has to lose it at least for a while so that you can uh, build up other people in the division and you can always move her over to smack. I mean, there's barely a brand split anymore, but you can always move her over to SmackDown and have her chase Rhea as well. If you just want to get her away from that raw crew. So there's, yeah, I feel like it's time. Uh, I expect this to be another in the long line of, uh, Bianca Belair title matches at big shows that had very lackluster build, but will be absolutely fantastic in the ring. She doesn't have bad matches. She really does. Particularly on, particularly on big shows. Yeah. So there is that. The women's WrestleMania showcase four-way tag match. Liv and Raquel mm-hmm. versus Natty and Shotzi versus Ronda and Shayna. Ronda, for some reason, is working with a broken arm <laughs> versus, versus Chelsea Green and Sony Deville. <laughs> sure. Do you feel sure, like Ronda has that thing like Drew McIntyre has where their brains broke <laughs> and they think it's worth it to uh, to just run themselves into the ground because it's uh, 
because they've convinced themselves that they're still like a top guy or top girl in this case. Mm-hmm. And the show needs them. I mean, Drew definitely has that. I mm-hmm. don't know if Rhonda has that because Rhonda's a lot richer than Drew. <laughs> you know? <laughs> So it's more difficult to explain though, because it's like, yeah, she mm-hmm. she's got a lot of money. Why is she here? <laughs> she's she's big mad about her and Liv Morgan not getting to use thumbtacks last year, I hear. Yes. Yes. I all the things I could be mad about. That wouldn't be one of them. But uh three way for the intercontinental title. Gunther versus Sheamus versus Drew McIntyre. It's gonna be violent and fun. This will be yep. your, your big work rate match. Seamus, the, the work rate guy. <laughs> I think he yeah. probably wins here, right? Because if you finally give him the big win after Gunther beat him like three times last fall. Gunther is has had a long run, and I think Gunther and Cody is the long-term plan here. Um, Because Roman's not going to work every TV. Roman might get a rematch at some point, but it's not like he's going to work every TV or pay-per-view between now and SummerSlam. Right. So uh, you can, and Gunther still hasn't lost in a singles match on the main roster, I don't believe. So you can, you could do the deal where uh, Sheamus pins Drew and then uh, Drew chases and Gunther moves on to bigger and better things and Mm -hmm. doesn't have to take a pin. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Hell in a cell. Your guy Edge versus your other guy Finn. <laughs> the Brood Edge versus the Demon Finn. Apparently, they're not going to do the Red Cage this this time, so that's nice. Yeah, that's the word. Yeah. Uh, look, <laughs> Edge has had one good match <laughs> in the last four years, and it was with Seth Rollins at one of those. It's the only good match in the history of the Saudi Show. <laughs> Um, so the odds are not in, in, uh, in this, in the favor of this being good, but Hey, maybe they'll, maybe they'll do a big, uh, some kind of big stunt or they'll break the wall of the cell or they'll like fall halfway off of it through a a crash pad or something. Maybe somebody will take the big Shane McMahon bump or something. So you at least get a, a moment out of it. Trying to be positive here. I don't want to see this. You, that's you. You're Mr. Brightside. You always <laughs> have been. Um, Edge continuing on his tour of putting over the young guys. 40 year old Finn Balor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he put over 40 year old Damian Priest. You now he's going to put over 40 year old Finn Balor. That's right. We can get to, uh, I don't know. <laughs> He's counting down. What's left for Edge? I mean, I know he's talking about retiring this year, or and Bald is threatening me with him going to AEW. But like, what is what's Edge got left to do other than some sort of nostalgia tag team run with Christian, which isn't possible currently? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, he did he did his did his stuff with his wife. Mm-hmm. And uh, now, yeah, I think he's uh, he's going to go to EW as soon as he possibly can. <laughs> I don't know. You know. Roman versus Cody headlines night two. The undisputed WWE Universal Championship is on the line. Roman versus Cody. They haven't done any physicality yet leading up to this. Um, so there is that. How are you feeling about the the last build to this? How, how this is uh, kind of worked out? I feel like they peaked, uh, maybe a week early. Um, obviously as of recording this, we haven't seen what they do on the last SmackDown, but, um, yeah, I, I'm feeling generally pretty hyped. Like the, the Cody solo match didn't, didn't do a lot for me. It's, um, it's tough because Roman's been on like three shows <laughs> in the six weeks of this build. Um, yes. So Cody is mostly building the matchup with Paul Heyman. Um, and some of the stuff they've done has been very good. And some of it's been okay. 
Um, and there was that one weird promo where Paul Heyman said he was going to sleep with Brandy. Um, Thankfully, they kind of forgot about that, I think. Yeah, they they, they dropped that one. Uh, but yeah, I, I think every week, Cody Rhodes is the rare man who is working. He's working every Raw now, every SmackDown. He's wrestling long matches on most of these shows. He's wrestling every town on every house show. And he's getting more over. <laughs> yeah. He, he is a G-damn unicorn in this company. <laughs> Nobody, as we've said, gets more over the more they're on WWE television. But Cody somehow is. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think it's time. I think it's time. He should win. And you should you can do whatever you want to do with Roman and the bloodline. And if you somehow get this mythical unicorn of a Dwayne match for next year or five years from now, or whenever, whenever Dwayne's schedule allows it after his uh, presidential run. Um, uh, great. But you don't, Roman doesn't need to be the champion for that. <laughs> so just, just pull the trigger now, just pull the trigger now and put it on Cody while he's, uh, the hottest thing in the company by a, by a wide margin. All righty. So there's that WrestleMania. I am, uh, I'm excited for WrestleMania. I'm, I don't think I'm, I don't know if anything can ever live up to the greatest wrestling match of all time. Sammy <laughs> Zayn versus Johnny Knoxville <laughs> at last year's WrestleMania. But, uh, but uh, I feel yeah. like there's a more and maybe that's uh, some of the uh, just the general good vibes of WWE post Vince McMahon allegedly <laughs> leaving. Um, but yeah, it feels like this is the most like excited and jazzed I've seen the general attitude towards the top stuff at Mania in uh, in several years. So it's cool. It's fun to. uh you know, it's sometimes it's fun to go down rabbit holes and get real mad and cranky about stuff on the, on our show. But uh, yeah, it's fun. it's fun. It's also, I think, equally fun to just be like, yeah, these are two shows and there's a bunch of stuff on both nights that I'm somewhere between at least somewhat interested and like really excited for. And that's fun. It's exciting. It's fun to be excited and have positive emotions once in a while. Who knew? <laughs> Uh, I'm concerned. Did you fall and hit your head this week? <laughs> Why are you Mr. Brightside this look, week? Look, I just like I'm, I I just like I said, I'm I'm I feel like there's a lot of good vibes. I'm really excited for like I can't tell you the last WrestleMania card where there was like four things that I'm genuinely excited for. <laughs> this is uh this is good. I'm just trying to uh just trying to ride the wave. I think there is a thing here happening. Where I think being on Peacock has been really helpful for them. Mm -hmm. They have kind of said it too. They come out after every pay per view and they say this is the most viewed pay per view with this brand name that we've ever done. Mm -hmm. They did nine thousand people for a house show in Denver last week. They sure <laughs> did more than they did for the previous TV they did there by several thousand. <laughs> right. They're selling out TV tapings. There's a there's it's a good time to be a fan of the World Wrestling Federation. Yeah. You know who's <laughs> a really good time to be? The guy who's on in the main event of all of these shows. Because whether it's correlation or causation, it is a good time to be Cody Rhodes. Yeah. Yeah. We were uh, talking about this off the air. You said, you know, if Cody didn't jump to this company, who on earth would be headlining against Roman? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, I I don't know, Seth? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the best I could could come up with. And like, you could, yeah. I mean, probably Seth? <laughs> yeah. We'd be or... doing our, our eighth shield rehash. Yeah, I mean, they did... Uh... They did a DQ the one time Roman and Seth wrestled in, in this iteration. So I assume at some point they thought they were going to get back to it before all of this fell into their lap. So, yeah, I think probably Seth or Brock. <laughs> <laughs> There's always the chance. Roman versus Omos. 
<laughs> sure. Oh man. Maybe Roman. <laughs> maybe they would have finally done that Lashley match they teased like eight months ago. Maybe. Yeah, that was weird. Now Lashley's in the in the battle royal on uh, on SmackDown. Bray Wyatt has lost his smile. Yeah, and apparently so has Uncle Howdy. So, mm-hmm. uh, so now Bob Lashley's on a SmackDown battle royal. So, hey, maybe maybe him and him and L.A. Knight and Elias will will do a, a wonderful comedy segment on the show <laughs> to uh, to uh, to brighten our spirits. <laughs> a wonderful variety show. That's right. There is still a slot on night two if they want to make it a seven match show as night one is. There is still a slot on uh, the Sunday night show where they could they could add something late. So buckle up, sports fans. <laughs> All right. Anything else you want to get into here? No. Like I said, I'm I'm trying to wait ride this wave of positivity. And uh, and I'm I'm looking forward to WrestleMania in a po- and not just in a oh my god look how much stuff there is to watch way yeah and uh, I do not believe you're gonna watch Stand and Deliver so <laughs> till next time everybody well, we'll, see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see I've been called a liar on this show <laughs> we'll find out I'm not going <laughs> you might have noticed I have not like forcefully disputed it. <laughs> We'll find out next week if I was telling the truth. That's a hook. There's a hook for you. Awesome. All right. I'm Ethan. (laughs) And I'm Liam. And uh, we'll be back very soon to uh, speak our truths (laughs) on the wrestling life. (laughs) Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. (laughs) It's real this time. The news... It's finally tightened. <laughs> I did really like the element of uh, Trump playing DeSantis into doing a big uh, show of oh, Florida's not going to assist with uh, with this uh, this this sham arrest, and then Trump's lawyers go to the press and like, yeah, he's going to surrender next week. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he did that on purpose, but I do think it's funny either way. You know, I just, I don't understand the thing where you get to negotiate your surrender. Oh. Do I get to negotiate my surrender? Are you rich? <laughs> no. And or a former president? <laughs> no. Then I'm going to say, no, you don't have that option. <laughs> oh, man. Um, explain this to me like I'm an eight-year-old. Um, <laughs> what was he indicted for? My understanding is when uh, he was a uh, when uh, I guess whenever the uh, the porn star was going to go public in yeah. the lead up to the election. Yes, and the lawyer paid her off. Yes, uh, with using his own money, as was the claim at the time. The Trump campaign uh, started right after that event happened, started making like monthly payments to him of like X amount of dollars. Uh, appears to be a reimbursement for what he paid off. Uh-huh. And, and was, I guess, I, it either wasn't report, I guess it wasn't reported properly or it wasn't, or it was reported as. You know, it was reported incorrectly or something like that. I don't think it was that it was not reported at all. But so it's, you know, it's not not illegal. <laughs> right. But, you know, it's uh, it's a bold uh, it's a bold strategy, you know. I try to keep on keeping on.